Okay, I wanted to compare GPT-5 to Opus 4.1 and Sonnet 4. And I asked the same uh, prompt, which is to create a streaming chat with the latest 120 billion OpenAI OSS model using Grok library, plentiful reasoning tokens, streaming in a new file. You may need to perform web search to find out the new info. So none of these models know about the new OpenAI model and they may not be familiar with Grok API documentation, but you should be able to figure it out, right? So at first, I asked it to uh, Opus. Uh, the model name looks different because uh, I, the last one I tried was Sonnet 4. As you can see, I was using Opus, and it just, it did search, and it looked like it was going to get it right, and then it went on to write these three files. This one is uh, 300 lines long, this one is almost 400, and an example user just went on and on, and it doesn't work. This is with Opus 4.1. Uh, uh, it doesn't work. As a matter of fact, if we run this, it says it, it's passing the wrong argument. The second one, the advanced one, actually uh, does not work either. Uh, it, it doesn't think... Uh, if I send a message, it doesn't think this model exists because it figured out the model name wrong and it went ahead and used a bunch of other open source models, which we, which we did not ask for. And it also created this example of usage. One, this is one of the beefs I have with cloud models that they just go on and on. Unless you really, uh, you, have, you always have to tell them to keep it simple and things like that. Second, I tried with GPT-5, which was super concise. It, searched for uh, Grok streaming responses, thought for a little bit and searched for different things. And then went ahead and wrote a single file, which works very concise, uh, 190 lines of code. And it just works. Just say hi, it prints the reasoning and then the assistant's response. The mistake the other models were making is that they weren't putting OpenAI slash in front of it. We are using Grok. That's the point, right? They were supposed to figure it out. Now, third, I asked Sonnet. Sonnet um, maybe did it better as far as far as verbosity. And but it went ahead and created this behemoth with 330 lines of code. It just does so much. Uh, maybe it's good if you if you really want this, and then it also added the usage example. I don't know why, but this doesn't work. We can run it. Uh, this it, it ran into the same problem that it I think it answered the model name wrong. It's just going to say this model does not exist. So it goes to show uh, GPT fives. I think GPT fives coding superiority uh, maybe doesn't come from it being the best coding model or something like that, but its agentic capabilities coupled with its uh, superior long context understanding puts it at the top because it knows what to search for. And because these search results, if you ever done an, uh, an application with web search, these web search results are like huge, right? Uh, they, they return multiple URLs and the model needs to figure out uh, the, if the correct information is present in there. Out of all those tokens, sometimes there can be 100,000 tokens from a single search result. And uh, that's very difficult. And GPT-5 uh, does that very well. And that's where its strength lies. And that's why I like GPT-5. I'm not saying it's the best coding model, but it's, all, I think, on par. But it's agentic capability coupled with superior, better agentic capability coupled with superior long context understanding, I think, makes it shine. Like, this is the second time I ran this with uh, GPT-5, and both times it nailed it. It just knows, like, it remembered uh, that it remembers that the model name needs to be written like that, right? I mean, if you don't know that, and you, you may spend hours, I mean, not hours, but a good 30 minutes trying to figure out what the problem was, because the, uh, this model name seems correct, but it doesn't have this prefix. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to share this with you. Uh, interesting finding indeed.